Next Sunday, the children's church are going to be having pizza during the service upstairs. Wow. Pizza up, up, upstairs during go? the service. You can go. <laughs> it, 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 if you qualify, you can go. How many wants Carol to qualify? <laughs> I don't think you got the vote, Carol. Sorry. I'm, <laughs> amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you. I know we are uh, got a lot going on up here today, but you know what? It's still the day the Lord's made, and it's still a day we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for coming to Christ Worship Center today. Amen. On the day the Lord has made. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to... Thank you for all the help. I tell you what, folks, we've got some good servants here today in the church. Amen. I've got this little podium right here, but I tell you, I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make the little podium work. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, thank our guests for coming today. Thank our guests. Everybody's kind of, uh, I feel a little bit today like there's a little bit of a... Um, People are just wore out. They're tired. You know, we've had a busy work week uh, here at the church, and not only that, but your, your jobs that you hold every day. But you know what? The Bible says that we stir up our mind by the way of remembrance. The way of remembrance, that means what Jesus has done. It's something that should spark inside of you, even when your physical body is tired. It should spark the spiritual man and woman inside of you. Amen. We're going to talk about uh, that a little bit today. Galatians chapter 1. We're going to start here at verse 6. This is the Apostle Paul here. He's speaking to the churches of, uh, at Galatia. And he says this in verse 6. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. What is the gospel? What is the Apostle Paul talking about? What other gospel is he saying that, that someone might try to preach? But here's the gospel that is the truth. It is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. That is exactly what the, the apostles started preaching on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. The beginning, the birth of the New Testament church. Look verse 9, he says, in case you didn't hear verse 8, Paul says, I want to say verse 9 to you. As I said, as we said before, so say now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Folks, we are not to please men. There are a lot of men pleasers out there. Uh, pat me on the back. Lift me up. Tell me I'm doing good. But the Bible says, do we persuade men or God? Do we seek to please men? And he says, if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. So if you're a man pleaser in here today, you're not a servant of Christ. You're not a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you just for a few moments, and this may be, y'all can record it. Because this may be one of the shortest messages Pastor Steve's ever preached. And some of you are saying, praise the Lord. But you know what? The Word of God never comes back void. You know what I could say? I could say God is love, and that would be enough. Because that's enough of the gospel right there to change lives. God is love. I want to talk to you about don't mess with the message. Just don't mess with the message. We have got people out there that are trying to find truth where the Bible says Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the, the, the way, the truth, and the life. We're living among a time right now where the truth of the gospel is being compromised. Folks, I don't know if you read it or even seen it, 
But I, you, you put it on the record, Pastor Steve is not watching the Olympics. And you know why? It's not because I don't want to uh, uh, lift up the USA uh, and the, 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 the talented men and women that are competing. But did you see how the opening ceremony went? Mockery, blasphemy, just slamming God to the ground. Uh, a repeat of the Lord's Supper, the final day before Jesus goes to the cross. And before he lays down the, his life for the sins of the world, when he called his disciples in and he ate with them and he broke bread and he, and he took the cup and he was telling them that this bread is the body that is broken for, the, for, for you. And the cup he took where the blood represents the blood that is for the sins of the world that will remit your sins. But yet we have drag queens. Yeah, I said it, drag queens. We got drag queens filling in the positions of Jesus and the disciples repeating the Lord's Supper on the ceremony of the Olympics. Did you see it? I did not watch it live. I seen the picture. I don't want to watch it live. I seen the picture. What a mockery that we have. We have a world that is going to hell in a handbasket. They are, and I'm telling you what it's telling me today as a pastor and you as believers is we're getting close to Jesus coming back. Amen. Amen. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Is this microphone on today? Because I don't know about you, but I've been in this for a little while now, and I have never seen so much darkness that is trying to plague not only the United States of America, but now over in Paris and over in Europe and over here and over there. I tell you what, when, when evil abounds, then the hate, people will hate each other. Then Jesus said, when you see these things, when you see how people are mocking me, when you see how people are, 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 are rebuking uh, anything that has to do with the, the godly character of, of living and morals and all, when you see the darkness and how dark it's getting in the world, he says this, look up, look up. He says, look up because your redemption is drawing nigh. Folks, we, it ain't no time for the church to be walking around like this. You ought to be walk, walking around like this. You ought to be waiting for the Lord to come back. Amen. I am. I'm excited about it. But the truth of the gospel is being co compromised nowadays. Jesus said, and, and, and when, when he filled those 120 in that upper room on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, they were all in one mind and one accord. They were all in something called unity. Something this country don't have right now. This country ain't in unity right now. The world's not in unity right now. They were in unity. They were seeking the face of God. They went and they were praying and said, Lord, come, come upon us. Come and give us that promise that you said that you were going to give us. And then the Bible says suddenly. I like suddenly. Suddenly it means it happens very quickly. Suddenly there came a rushing mighty wind in the building. A rushing mighty wind came in, and the Bible says cloven tongues of fire sat upon each of them that were in that upper room. And the Bible says that the Holy Ghost fell upon that 120, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began with, to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Not as man gave them utterance, as the Spirit gave them utterance. They walked out of that upper room, folks, and they went and preached Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection everywhere they went. The truth of the gospel. That's the truth of the gospel. But see, what we have nowadays in this land is churches that are watering down the gospel. They are sugarcoating the gospel. You know why? They don't want to lose their members. They don't want to lose the tithe coming in. They don't want to, uh, they are trying to, they don't want to preach that sin is wrong and that the wages of sin is death. Now, folks, I don't know about you, but when I was in sin, I kind of knew I was in sin. But when God convicted me that I was in sin, it wasn't a condemnation to me. It was a conviction that made me want to love him because he died for me. That's what it did to me. It drew me to the Lord, not away. If, if, if speaking and preaching about sin drives you away from God, then you need to get in touch with Jesus. 
You need to get, it should draw you to him. Amen. But we got people pleasing churches. They don't want to preach that sin is wrong. They don't want to ever mention that hell is a real place. Folks, let me tell you something. There's a heaven up there, and there's a hell too. There's a straight, narrow way that leads to heaven, and there's a wide and broad path that leads to a place called hell. And you know what? Jesus said that he would that no man would perish. He don't want none of us to ever go to that place called hell because it wasn't made for his creation. It was made for the devil and his angels. It was made for the unbeliever. It was made for the false prophet. It was made for the ones that, that dress up like drag queens. Now, they can get saved. I'm not condemning all of that. I'm just saying what they did was deadly wrong. Even when I was in the deepest of my sin, I never mocked God. I never used God's name in vain, even though I cussed like a sailor back then. I never did use God's name in vain, and I always respected people that loved God. Even though I was, might have been a wild character at one time, but when I knew somebody loved God, I tried to watch my attitude. I tried to watch how I talked because I had a respect for God that he was a holy God, and I wanted to give him the reverence he deserves. But we have people nowadays that, that don't care. They just don't care. Uh-uh. And you know what? People, preachers today, they, they never mention hell. They, they, they never mention anything like sin or nothing like that because they want to keep the pews full. Amen. But one, they might offend somebody. No, I'll tell you what. It might actually save somebody if they start talking and preaching it in love. There's the key, in love. Jesus, he came to this earth. He condemned a lot of things that the Pharisee was doing. But yet everything he did was out of love. Amen. Love, love, love is what it's all about here today. The scripture tells us, we just read it here in verse 10. If we seek to persuade men and to seek to please men, then we would not be the servant of Christ. Now, folks, I, I love you, and I appreciate everybody's compliments, and I appreciate your respect to me. But I want to please the Lord. I want to please the Lord. I, I, I don't want to, uh, to, to just get up here and say a few words that makes you feel good, and, and you walk out of here saying, boy, didn't Pastor Steve do this or do that? I want you to walk out of here saying, boy, didn't the Lord show up today? Didn't the Lord touch my life today? Because you know what? I can read the Word of God, but unless God moves on His Word into your life, it ain't going to change nobody. This Word is what is going to change your life. Not me, but the Word. Let God be true, the Bible says, and let every man be a liar. Don't it say that? Let God be true. Hey, excuse me, amen. The church today doesn't need a new gospel. It doesn't need a new program. It doesn't need all that. It needs to get back to the basics. And what is the basics? The basis is loving one another. Loving one another. Loving your neighbor as yourself. Walking in unity. That's when God shows up. Now look at Psalms, if you will. Turn to the book of Psalms 145. Now I want you to see something here in the book of Psalms 145. Look at verse 8. The Lord is gracious and He's full of compassion. He's slow to anger. Thank God for that. And, great of, and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all. His tender mercies are, all, are over all of his works. Now look at verse, uh, let me get it here, 18. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth. Amen. Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It's the truth that will make you free. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear Him, and He will also hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love Him, but all the wicked will He destroy. Oh, you could have left that part off, Pastor Steve. Why didn't you leave that part off? It's because this. As a, whatever a man sows, he shall reap. If you sow into darkness, you'll reap darkness. If you sow into the light, you'll receive the light. Amen. It's just the way it is. God is a God of compassion. Thank God. God is a God of great mercy. God is near to all them that will call upon Him in truth. Now listen, folks. We don't need a new way of sharing the gospel. 
We don't need a new program of how we change this around and we put fog lamps and, and we do all this stuff to try to draw the people in. I believe the Word of God can draw a person today just like it did when it was first written on these pages. I believe it's still just as powerful. It's a universal word for every generation. Amen. The church needs today is to get back to their first love. And your first love is Jesus Christ. That should be your first love. Not your jobs, not your homes, not your bank account, not your, 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 your we are to love our families, but Jesus needs to be number one in your life. He needs to be the one that we do uh, give him the praise to. So how do we do it, Pastor Steve? If you and I are going to have that desire for Jesus and that desire he has for you and me in this church today and the church of the world, I would say America, but the church of the world, it's all described here in John chapter 17. I want you to turn with me to John chapter 17 now. John chapter 17 is the longest recorded prayer Jesus ever gave. Now, I'm sure Jesus talked to his heavenly Father many times and longer prayers than is recorded here. But as far as recorded in the Word of God, John 17 is a whole chapter of Jesus praying to his Father. And it's so important that we uh, understand what this is because this is what God desires for you and I today. Look at verse 21 in John 17. That they, who's he talking about? He's talking about you. He's talking about me, Christians, believers. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, are in me and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. You see what the importance that Jesus is sharing about unity? You know what? God hates two things. God hates religion. Religion is a form without the power. God hates religion. He loves relationships. That's what he loves. And another thing, God hates denominations. Man made them. Man-made denominations. Why do we have walls built up between our churches? Why is there a church of Christ here or a Baptist church here and, and, and there's walls or fences to where you come out on Sunday morning after lifting up the name of Jesus and won't even look at your brother or sister over here? Why? Because they don't know the truth. The truth, the truth is Jesus. The truth is Jesus. They'll all go into heaven. We we'll all want to be in the mansion that God's got prepared for us, but we won't talk to our brothers and sisters. Jesus is saying right here, Father, that they all would be one and the world would believe that you have sent me. Look at verse 22. And the glory which thou gavest me, I gave to them that they may be one even as we are one. You see the Father, you see me, Jesus said. The disciples even asked Jesus many, one time. They said, Jesus, you keep talking about this Father, this heavenly Father, God. Why don't you show us the Father and it will satisfy us. We need to know who this Father is. You talk about him all the time. And Jesus said in John 14, he said, have I been so long with you? Three and a half years here walking with you, sharing the gospel, raising the dead, healing the sick, walking on the water, feeding the 5,000, doing all these marvelous things, and you don't know who the Father is? Philip? Philip? Are you sure, Philip, you don't see the Father? He says, he that sees me has seen the Father. Meaning when you see me, me and my Father are one. You see Jesus, he is the manifestation of God, the Spirit. Amen. When Jesus came to this earth over 2,000 years ago, God operated through his Spirit, through men of old, through women of old. He opened the Red Sea. He did many, many mighty, wonderful works. He was in the cloud. He was in the pillar of fire. He was in all these, these examples of manifestation. But then one day, God, God himself, says, I'm going to send my only begotten Son. I am going to incarnate myself into a human flesh. I am going to walk among my own creation through a man, Christ Jesus. I'm going to be the sacrifice of the sin of the world. 
Because you've got to understand, there was nobody on the face of the earth that could stand in the gap. We all were sinners. We all had come short of the glory of God. We all were going to a devil's hell. But yet Jesus Christ comes steps in to his own human creation through a virgin named Mary, conceived of the Holy Ghost, conceived of the Spirit of God that was pure, no sin, stands in the gap, dies on the cross for your sin and for my sin, incarnates himself in human flesh, God in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. All of these things, he's standing here and he's saying right here in this prayer that they may all be one, Father, as you and I are one. You see me, you see the Father. You see Jesus, you see God. He is all of this. Amen. And look what it says right here. Verse 23, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou has loved me. You want to see something? You want to see something here? God wants you to know. God wants me to know that the love he has for you is the same love he had for the man Jesus when he was walking here. That's what he just says. Oh, but he loved Jesus. Surely he loved Jesus a little bit more than me. No. He wants the world to know that the love that he has for him, he has for you. And that the world will know that you've sent me, that you have loved them as, I have, as you have loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be also with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world had not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have I known that, you're, that thou hast sent me. And look at verse 26. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherein thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Do you see here, this is what it's all about here? It's all God wants the world to know that the heavens sent the man Jesus. Amen. The heavens sent the man Jesus that with the same love that he has for him, he has for you. Amen. I don't think you heard me, church. I don't think you heard the importance of this. God wants his church to know. God wants you to know that he loves you as much as he loved Jesus when he walked this earth. You ain't getting it. Is this on? Is this on Byron? Okay, I'm just wondering. Until we come to that revelation that Jesus Christ, the Son of God that came to be the, the, the sacrifice for the sins of the world, that God the Father, Spirit of God that dwelt in that man Christ Jesus, loved him and loves you the same amount. The same amount. But how could he love me, Pastor Steve? I fail. I still do this. I still mess up there. Thank God for grace. Grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. Thank God for grace. Thank the Lord for the grace of God and the mercy of God. Until you and I come to the fullness of that revelation that what heaven loves in Christ Jesus, he loves you too. Amen. Jesus was the incarnation of God upon this earth. And now we, we are the representations of Jesus on this earth. When Jesus walked this earth, that was God's representation of him on this earth. Now you and I represent him. Are you representing him in a holiness? Or do you leave church here today? praising the Lord here today and go to the restaurant and cuss out the waitress because she didn't bring your tea in time? I, I know a lot of waitresses. You can tell. I go out to eat a lot. You can tell. 
And I try to preach to this congregation, tip your waitresses. Be good to your waitresses. Watch your mouth. Don't get upset. Don't do this. I'll tell you why. Because you are representing the Lord Jesus Christ. We've had waitresses that have attended our church before and say they hate waiting on church folks. I'm telling you the truth. And I say why. They say they're the most needy and, and arrogant acting that I've ever seen. And I said, no, no, it shouldn't be like that. They said, I'm telling you, it's like that. So we are representing the Lord in everything we do. It doesn't mean we don't uh, get up tight sometimes, but watch it. Watch it. Be careful. We are the, his, his feet, his hands, his mouth, his ears, his eyes. We're all of the Lord Jesus Christ on this earth. Jesus was anointed. Now we are anointed. You hear me? Now you are called. You are appointed. You're anointed now. Jesus was the love of God. And sometimes we kind of question, are we really the love of God? John 25 again says this, O righteous Father, that the world, it hasn't known you, but I've known you. And these have I known that you have that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them your name. I've let them know who you are. And I will declare it. That the love wherein you have loved me may be in them. And then I in them. The whole message of this book right here. It's a love story. From Genesis to Revelation. This is a love story to his creation. How many of you when you were dating, you don't see it nowadays because these kids nowadays text each other and they that's how that's their love letters nowadays. But when me and my wife were dating, we sent each other letters. Oh, I can't wait to see you. I love you so much. I can't wait till we go out on a date again. And I'm not mocking that. I'm just saying love letters. When I was in school, Tim, you can know about this. If we liked a girl that was sitting over here, we send a little note. I like you. Do you like me? Check yes or no. <laughs> now, am I telling the truth? Now, you young folks don't know nothing about that. that, that that's the way we communicated. And, if, and, and we was hoping that letter come back with a check yes on it. <laughs> but if it said no, then we'd have to look on this side. Then, you know. <laughs> But anyway, I'm just saying, this book right here, this holy Bible, this God-breathed word is a love letter to his creation. It's a love letter to you, and it's a love letter to me. Amen. It is especially for the mankind that God loves so much. There, but there's a great difference between concept and revelation. You see, concepts has chained the church. Concepts have changed the church. Amen. It's not like Revelation. Churches are trying to figure out, okay, what can we do to get God's Spirit to move again? What kind of program, what kind of gospel group, what kind of preacher can we bring in to get the, the Spirit of God moving again? And that's not the it. That's a concept. The revelation is, you want to see the Spirit of God move again? Start loving one another. Start loving one another. Start walking in unity. Start putting your arm around them and lifting them up when they're down. Don't talk about them. Lift them up. Bible says edify one another higher than yourself. Now, we all like to have a little pat on the back. Oh, you did so good. And that, hey, give every man what they're worthy. That it, that's, that's fine. That's fine. But how about let's lift up Jesus? Let's lift him up and give him a pat on his back every once in a while, okay? Amen. So churches are trying to figure out how can we get God to move again? How can we see miracles in the church again? How can we see the miraculous and the, and the healings and the, and the supernatural again like they did back in the book of Acts? How do we see it again? Amen. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 here. Let's check that out just for a few moments. Verse 13. i got to get on it first. Ephesians 4, okay, verse 13. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature 
of the fullness of Christ. 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slay of men, and cunning craftiness, whereof they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in... What does it say? Speaking the truth in love may grow up unto them all things, which is the head, even Christ. Look at verse 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Did you see that? Now look at verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Oh, I've seen a few people move. That which is good. Here's what you got to do. But that which is good to the use of edifying. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereof ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ's sake hath forgiven you. What is the Lord saying? He's saying this. When you and I are walking in love and in unity with one another, then you're going to see the signs. Then you're going to see the miracles. Then you're going to see the miraculous. Then you're going to see the healings. Then you're going to see the deliverance. Then you're going to see the, these things happen. It's a combination of love and unity. God will move in a mighty way. You see, many people have concepts of God. They believe this. They believe in the love of God. It's a concept to them. They believe heaven and hell, morals and values and the truth of God, them are concepts. But, cause, but, but, but only a few people experience the revelation of God. See, concepts are, 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 are physical. Concepts are natural. Revelation is divine. Revelation is spiritual. There's a lot of churches now dealing with concepts. They're trying to do the right things for the times that we live in. Pastor Steve, we can't do it like that nowadays because this generation's different than it was back then. We need to change something. We need to change the Word of God. You're not going to bring folks in like that. You need to bring them in easy. You need to spoon feed, feed them. Folks, I'll tell you what. When I gave my life to the Lord the first time at nine years old, I wasn't getting spoon-fed. I was getting fed the, the true meat of the Word of God about how much He loved me and how much I had let Him down. As far it let me, it, it, it convicted me that I had made God sad, that I that that my sin upset Him, and that He would come and stand in the gap for me and die for me. When a man that never knew sin, never had sin, someone died for me that didn't do anything wrong. That, 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 that hurt me. It convicted me, and it made me want to love him more. And I, and I said, Lord, I want you to be the Lord of my life. And that was a revelation he showed me. It wasn't a concept. It was a revelation. And that's what changed my life. That's what will change the church is revelation. Amen. Jesus said this in John 5, 39. Search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. It's all about Jesus, folks. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. There's all kinds of concepts, but God is wanting to give His church revelation. Revelation. See, that's why He gave us three tremendous men in the Word of God that walk through these scriptures right here in your Bible. Peter, John, and Paul. Now, not, I'm not saying there's not others, but these are three right here that were tremendous. You know why? Because all of them had previous concepts of God. <laughs> and then love showed up. And then love showed up. You see, Saul had a concept of what God was. He was against Christianity. He was against God. He was against all this. That was a concept he had. But on that road to Damascus, love showed up. 
Love showed up on him on that road to Damascus and love knocked him to the ground. And that bright light and that love of God didn't condemn him. It just said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul didn't say, get out of my way. He said, who art thou, Lord? Is that you? And Jesus said, it is, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for you, Saul, to kick against the pricks. And what happened was Revelation showed up to Paul where he got up and became one of the greatest apostles in the Word of God. Fourteen books of the New Testament written by him. A man that had a concept before that God was just a God of this. There was no salvation. There was no this. Christians were just crazy. And he delivered them up to be killed, put in prison, all that. But when revelation showed up and when love showed up, he changed the world. Folks, that's what we should be doing. God has brought us, every one of us in here has had a road to Damascus experience. We've all had that. If you were a sinner, which we all were, we've all come short of God's glory, and God forgave you of your sin, then there's a revelation that love has shown up in your life, and we need to change the world. You see, God is love, and the only way that we can show love is to love one another. Love one another and to have God in us. You see, God has to have an object to display His love through. God uses the sun to display his love to you. God uses the stars. God uses this air you're breathing to display his love to you. You can't see it, but it's affected. And what God is wanting me and you to do here today is he wants an object here that he can put his love in to display to the world. Will you be that one? Will you be the, say, hey, Lord, here I am. I'll be, a, I'll, be an, I'll be a container you can use to show the, the, your love to the world. That's what we need. You know, there's a song out there, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. You know, you've heard that song, and that is so true. And how is it going to see it? Through the, through the media? Is it going to see it through the news? Is it going to see it through the world? No, it's going to see it through the believers like you and I. We are the ones that is going to show the love of God. Amen. Doctrine will not grow a church. Doctrine's good. It's good to know the doctrine. I love the apostles' doctrine. I love what they do. I believe in repentance. I believe we need to be baptized in Jesus' name. I believe that we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost in our life. I believe in doctrine, but it won't grow a church. Faith won't even grow a church. We've got to have faith because the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please Him. But faith ain't going to grow a church. You know what's going to grow a church? Love. Love is going to grow a church. God is love. You don't have love. God is love. He only displays love to you. I, I heard an atheist one time, and I'll be short with this. An atheist at work said, I don't believe in God. I don't believe God is, is, is I, I just don't believe in him. There's no God, there's no God, there's too much of this. How come children die? You know, they always want to bring that up. How come children die and all this? If God was a God of love, children wouldn't die and all this stuff like this. And the Lord gave me a revelation. He said, tell him this. Do you have any grandchildren? Yeah, I got grandchildren. I said, you love them? Yeah, I love them. That's from God. So I said, they said, huh? No, it ain't. I said, it's from God. You may not believe in him. But he has displayed a little bit of love in you, even though you hate his goods, even though you don't even care about God. He has shown his love through you to that grandchild. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Because, hey, if somebody does us like that, we wash our hands, we're through with them. But God says, spit in my face. That's okay. Cuss me out. That's all right. Tell me you don't believe me. That's all right. You're still breathing my air. I still love you. You can't make me not love you. The Bible says in Romans 8 that nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Them drag queens that stood on that stage mocking God's Lord's Supper in Paris, God loves every one of them. God loves them as much as does you. He does. You know I can prove it? Because when you and I were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We had nothing that pleased Him. Sin, sin to God. 
Whether you cuss, commit adultery, murder, or do like they did. Sin, sin. But yet he loved them and he loves us so much. So I want you to see something. Faith won't do it. Doctrine won't do it. Love is what's going to be the key to grow a church. Our problem is, <laughs> oh, man, you thought I was going to get, get, get through this service without stepping on somebody's toe, but what, here we go. The problem is we don't want to love anybody that don't love us back. Am I telling the truth? I'm talking about church folks. The world out there, hey, that's, that's what they're used to. But why are we, as children of God, only love people that love us? Let me tell you something. Pastor Roy can vouch to this. He knows he's been in the ministry. Pastor uh, Man, uh, Gershon, I'm fixing to call you Emmanuel. He can verify this. Sister uh, uh, <laughs> Maggie, Minister Maggie back there, she can do. I'm just, but you, you listen to what I'm going to say. There's going to be people, if you're in ministry, that's going to cut you down. There's going to be people that talk about you in ministry. There's going to be people say you ain't doing a good job. We need a new pastor. And then the pastor's going to say, I need a new congregation. And I'm just, that was a joke. That was a joke. But what I'm saying that for is this. When that happens to you, think about this. You're in good company. They did Jesus the same way. They wanted to throw Jesus over the hill many a times. Who is this guy saying he's the son of God? Blasphemy, blasphemy. Don't get him out of here. As a matter of fact, that's why they killed him. It's because he said he was the savior of the world and that God was his father. So folks, if you're in ministry or if you even are a child of God and somebody cuts you down for being that, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I look at it like this. Thank God they're giving somebody else a break. Praise the Lord. But listen, listen. Don't mess with the message. Leave the message of love at the forefront of your ministry. God says this, if people talk about you, love them. If they hold unforgiveness towards you and bitterness, love them. If they try to rip you off, love them. If they lie on you, ooh, that's a good one. I, nobody likes to be lied on or something they didn't do. Love them. They lied on Jesus, didn't they? Didn't they lie on him? Because we read it earlier in, verse, uh, seven, in chapter 17, verse 26. As the worship team prepares to come, I wanna, I'm going to finish with this. 26. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Three times in the scriptures it's recorded that we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Three times in the scripture. Love Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Four times in the scriptures, love your neighbor as yourself. Twenty times in the scripture, we are to love our brother. If that wasn't so important to God that we love one another, it would be the three times or it would be the four times. Twenty times we're to love one another. Amen. A new commandment, Jesus said, I give unto you that you love one another like I have loved you. If we don't reach that level of love, we're missing the message. I don't care how uh, gifted you are. I don't care how lifted up you are and how good you do things around the church and all this, if you don't have love as your main ingredient, then it means nothing. 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter. We're going to take a love test before we leave here today. Uh oh. I'm going to take one and you're going to take one. 13 verses of 1 Corinthians 13. Now let's see where we fall on the love test. Amen. Listen. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not love. Charity is love translated in the King James. I have become as a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy. Woo. 
And I can understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith that I can remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. You hear it? Did your Bible say that? Am I reading out of a different one? And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Why? Because love suffers long. Love is kind. Love envies not. Love vaunteth not itself. That means don't boast. It doesn't boast itself. It's not puffed up. Doeth not believe itself unseemly. Love doesn't seek it its own. Love is not easily provoked. It thinks no evil. It keeps no record of wrongs. Oh, come on. <laughs> Man. Boy, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost just told me to say that. <laughs> I'm telling you. We love to hold a, a, a bitterness or a, a, a something, unforgiveness that someone did to us years and years ago. Keeps no wrong. Hmm. It, did Jesus erase your sins? Did he throw them as far as the east is to the west? Do you see Jesus over there trying to dig them out? Oh, that steam alone, man. Where is that thing he did back years ago? No. He throws them as far as the east is to the west, and he wants you to do the same thing. If someone hurts you and you forgive them, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Rejoice. Love rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Who's the truth? Jesus. He's the truth, way, and the life, right? Yes, That's what you rejoice in. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Never. Hallelujah. Love never fails. Ooh. But whether there be prophecies, they'll fall. Yep. They'll fail. Whether there be tongues, they'll cease. Hmm. Whether there be knowledge, it'll vanish away. But we know in part and we prophesy, prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I become a man, I put away childish things. Some of us need to put away some childish things. You're grown up now. For now we see through a glass darkly. Folks, right now we just barely see a glimpse of what eternity's like. We, we just... Yeah, I can see a little of that. And God shows us just a little bit of here and a little bit of there. Though we look through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I be known even, even as I am known. Now abideth faith, hope, and love. These three. But the greatest of these is, is love. love. As we stand, listen to me. Listen to me as we stand. Don't mess with the message. This message is a message of love. Jesus loves us. He wants you to be that representation of him on this earth. Whatever you say, whatever you think, wherever you go, whatever you do, represent him. Because he says, if you'll do that, then the world will know that I have sent you and that you are with me. And that's what's going to bring people to the Lord. You know the greatest compliment you can have as a Christian? It's not, oh, man, what a wonderful church y'all got over there. It's this, I can see Jesus in you. What if you, I can just feel a glow off of you. I can just tell there's something different. What is it about you that's so different? That's the greatest compliment you can get is when the world sees Jesus through you. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. If you're here today, if you're listening online, hey, the Lord can save over the airwaves, I know. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, or maybe you feel like that, well, I've never been, I've never really thought about how much He loves me. I've really never thought about how much God wants me to love Him back like He loves me. I, I've never really thought about giving my life to the Lord. I can't think of a better day to do it. Folks, look, we're running out of time. And I'm not trying to speed you up to get saved. I just want you to get saved. Amen. 
I want you to get saved because just like Brother Gershon said, that gospel group, when they got on that plane, they never thought that'd be their last time on this earth. But thank God they were prepared, ready for heaven. But there's people that's going to and fro right now as I speak that's not ready. They're just thinking, I've got plenty of time. The enemy's told them, oh, you've got plenty of time. Just live it up. And folks, I don't want you to miss heaven. I would not be doing my the Lord justice. And Pastor Roy does the same thing. We as ministers here would not be doing the right justice if we didn't make an invitation and an opportunity for you to give your life to the Lord. I'm not going to stand before the Lord one day with blood on my hands and the Lord say, why didn't you ever invite them to be uh, 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 my child, to give their life over to me? I'm giving you an opportunity right now to give it to the Lord. And I'll tell you what, folks, it'll be the best decision you'll ever make. Your children will be impacted. The Bible says that when God fills you with his Holy Spirit, that the promise is also to your children. Did you know that? Did you know that? That's scripture. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to as many as the Lord our God shall call. So God gives you always more than you expect. So as we sing, these altars are open. Brother Gershon will come up here. I'll come up here. Brother Eugene, let's pray. If you got a need, if hey, if you need healing today, <laughs> the God of love's in the house. The God of love that wants to heal your bodies in the house. If you need a family situation taken care of, the God of love is here. If you need a marriage fixed, the God of love is here. If you got unforgiveness and you just can't get it out, somebody's hurt you so bad, the God of love and the God of, uh, of, uh, of forgiveness is here to take it away from you right now. Let's just give it to the Lord. Let's let God be God, okay? And not mess. don't mess with the message. Let the message be the message. Come on, let's sing to the Lord.